Robbie, it's so good to see you. And listen, we at Glad have been so excited about fellow travelers as soon as we heard about it. And you are an executive producer on this show. And before we talk about the series, I would like to know how, you know, it's based on a book, obviously. How did this story and the book come into your life uh, in the beginning? Um, Ron and I have known each other now for about 10 years or something like that. We, uh, we worked on my policeman together and while I don't know, it was probably a few months before we were actually gonna start shooting My Policeman. He sent me um, a few books, but this was one of them. And I just, I loved it. I read it over the weekend and uh, and then we started talking about it and it kind of, you know, spiraled from there. But, um, you know, I, I didn't really know anything about the Lavender Scare, if I'm being honest. So it was uh, obviously, there are many reasons um, why I love the story and I hope that people love the story, but uh, it was really interesting to kind of learn about the Lavender Square as well in the book. You know, it was something that I wasn't super familiar with either. And then, uh, you know, watching this series, I, I'm lucky I got to see most of it um, before anyone else. Uh, but it's so well done and it's so interesting. And I think, you know, about so many times with, with these projects of putting queer people back into the narrative and really going back and looking back at what it would have been like, how important is it for you to be, you know, a part of telling these stories that really do show people what it could have been like to be a queer person? You know, this is a 50s, 60s, 70s, and, you know, 80s, obviously. I think for the obvious reasons, you know, just as a gay man, you want to be part of these stories. And growing up, I remember how much, uh, you know, when in like Dawson's Creek, when there was like the first kiss or... Yeah. You know, A Single Man was like a movie I watched when I was a professional soccer player in Closet. And I was like, oh, it's just so beautiful. And and I hope I have a love story like this. So, you know, I, I obviously want to be part of these stories. Um, um, but even more than that, I've been, um, since even working on All American, like I've just been really connected to telling stories that are, you know, have underdogs or forbidden romance or, um, you know, about people that kind of, in the past have lived a little bit on the outside um so uh, or outsiders and it's definitely how i felt you know as i was younger and I, i'm sure a lot of people that read this or watch this um you know have the same kind of feeling so you know it's kind of just the characters and the books and the writers and directors that i'm drawn to or people that also want to tell those kind of stories and then you get to you know have an opportunity to have matt bomer and jonathan bailey really lead this who are fantastic in this um both uh lgbtq actors and you know which is so important to be a part of telling the story what was it like to get to you know share this experience of bringing you know this book into you know into television you know matt i, I think it was like shortly after ron and i set this with Fremantle. um you know we had a discussion with him about the book and having him come on to play hawk and also be an ep and He's been, um, I've known Matt a little bit for not, for a little while now, uh, you know, we've been friends and so it's, it's been, it's been really incredible to work with him in a lot of different ways. You know, he's, he's extremely smart. He's not just like handsome, but he's extremely smart and he's a really good person. You know, uh, I think anyone that knows him, you know, his character, he's just like, just such a mensch. But on top of that, the thing that I learned and that I was so not surprised, but just I guess it was very impressive was like he, he works incredibly hard, you know, up early, you know, when he would he wouldn't have much rest and he'd still be like, you know, working on different scenes and remembering his lines and just just so much stuff that I uh, found really inspiring. And also, you know, there's obviously times where you're exhausted on set and he as the lead is like setting the tone for, you know, being a professional and being prepared and all that stuff. So I was really impressed by him and, and Johnny, you know, I'd known for a while because we auditioned him for my policeman, but you know, I, I'd seen his work in the past and also seen him obviously in Bridgerton, but he also uh, really surprised me in a great way. He's just such an incredible actor and like such a good person and can really do so many different things. I mean, his part, as you've seen uh, playing Tim is just so different than his part in Bridgerton and he really, can go to so many different places. So working both with both of them is really like a, a dream. And you know, you add on top of that, Alison Williams and Shalani Aladdin, Noah Ricketts and Aaron and Chris Bauer. But like, it's just, we got so lucky with uh, this cast. Um, you know, a lot of them are, you know, part of the LGBTQ uh, plus community, um, which made it, I think just a little bit easier to tell this story just because there was a lot that we didn't really have to explain to them, but you know, it was, uh, it was just incredibly rewarding. And I, and I think like the word lucky and privilege for me is uh, is really how I feel. Like I just, I, I was around such incredible talents and just good people. So it was, it made the process easy. 
Yeah, no, I mean, it's such a, like a dream team and it's so good. I mean, can't wait for people to see it. Um, you know, when I, I, like I said, I hadn't read the book, but and one of the things that I was surprised, uh, or not surprised, I just wasn't expecting as much, was how much the Catholic church and religion is a part of this story. Um, you know, and thinking about that, I know for you, that's something that you've talked about, you know, growing up Catholic. You know, before we talk about that, but also like what an interesting opportunity or what, what an interesting time when the Pope in real life now just said that, you know, blessing same sex unions. What was your reaction to that? Um, well, yeah, I was raised like a, you know, in a very Catholic household and my family still, a lot of them are, are uh, you know, devout Catholics. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, and Ron also, he's not Catholic, but he's, you know, found a very, healthy relationship with his religion yeah. um i think it's well first say i think it's really interesting i think there's a stereotype sometimes that like if you're gay you can't be religious or you can't yeah. be part of a religion i just would really disagree with that you Agreed. know i am someone you know that was raised catholic but now i wouldn't necessarily say i'm a certain religion but definitely have faith in different things and like really interested in all types of religions i like the history of them i love reading about that. I love reading and hearing stories about you know a number of religions so you know for Tim and his kind of journey with religion I, I find really interesting and not you know stereotypical at all and uh, you know I hope uh, for the audience kind of it just makes people think about you know um, gay men and women's history with religion and our relationship with religion um, but uh, you know it is interesting, you know, I, I think what's helpful, I mean, just to speak to the Pope, it's always helpful when someone like him mm -hmm. is more accepting, you know, in a lot of different ways, because, you know, so many people like live and die by whatever the Pope says. So I definitely know there's people in my family who like would see something like that and have like texted me in the past, like, wow, did you see this? <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. So it makes it makes a big difference. So, you know, I, I, I love Tim's story with religion and his struggle. I think it's very real. And, um, you know, I think uh, something very relatable for a lot of us. Yeah, and I know it, it was such an issue. I got so many text messages about it. And I think, it, you know, to your point, that's exactly what can happen. Like you said, when people who, you know, have a more traditional, you know, idea of things see something like that, I think there is potential. And, and so that's what right. it's all about. And I think right. you know, I'm glad we're doing so much work to kind of also along with what you said about showing that you can be an LGBTQ person and also be someone of faith and you can also be right. someone who is of faith and support the community. And so I love it. Right. With this, it also, you know, you know it, it spans decades. And I think one of the important themes, obviously, is the inclusion of HIV and AIDS and the way, you know, that affected people, you know, in the 80s. And how was it for you to kind of be a part of telling that story and going back and, you know, kind of showing such a, a hard time for the community, but also an important one, because we don't have enough still, you know, representation um, and inclusive stories, I think, on television that really are are, are, are showing that time. Right. Um, I've always been uh, very interested in um, those stories of, you know, men and women uh, dealing with AIDS, especially at that time in the 80s, 90s. and the the huge amount of loss and tragedy but also people coming together and and loving each other even more because our time with each other or their time with each other was so precious so um you know i i think it's really important obviously to tell those kind of stories and in, in any in any kind of way whether it's writing or you know documentaries or movies or, or tv so I, I again i i know i said earlier but i, I feel lucky to be part of this project because you know it's entertaining this is a love story it's a political thriller and it's not a history lesson but we still you know it's set in times during times where it was incredibly hard i think to be you know a gay man or woman or anyone that didn't look like uh you know the stereotypical american mm -hmm. so you know it's 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 um it's it's again i i feel lucky I feel lucky and and one thing that i when I think of Tim and Hawk's love story, and it's obviously it expands over the decades, is like, you know, when you have a love like that, and um, you know, the outside world, uh, you know, is not accepting you, or really, it's like a life death situation for you when you have AIDS. Like, I, I really think you hold the people you love like a little bit tighter, and those intimate moments in your apartment or your home are, are even more special. So you really. Um, 
can feel i think as an audience when you watch this you can you really feel like how much love they have for each other although it's a bit you know um i don't know what the word used too much tumultuous or is that you know it's kind of uh i don't know it's it's um it's not like smooth sailing you know it's kind of yeah. the relationship but when they're with each other you can just really get a sense i think of like how deep and how connected they are and how much love they have for each other and i think that's because of you know the stakes of just being a gay man during all those decades but definitely during the 50s and 80s when being you know gay in the united states was maybe two of the most dangerous times mm -hmm. um, argu arguably i think and yeah and i and i think you know, with matt bomer i feel you know he he's such an amazing actor and had, has done so many amazing things but i can tell that he's at this point in his career where he really wants to be, you know, signing on to projects that are telling LGBTQ stories, that are like telling the history and stuff. Was that something that you got to talk to him about? Because if you look like at some of the most recent things that he's done, you can tell that it's so important to him. I think it is important to Matt. I haven't spoken to him about that, but I remember one day on set, or maybe this was even after, I said like Matt, this is like <laughs> I was just like Matt. It's so incredible that you are an out gay man that has a family and kids, and you've been in this. You know, in the normal heart, you've been in this. You know, you're being maestro, obviously, fellow travelers. Like, it's really incredible that you um, have just like been such uh, a role model for people, and uh, an incredible yeah. actor, incredibly talented. Very much, you know, everybody wants him to be in things, and he's not had to hide any parts of himself. So. You know, I haven't necessarily had that discussion with him, but I definitely told him like it's like what you've done is 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 incredible and incredible for younger people like myself, but even younger people and 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 I mean I shouldn't even put an age on it. Like I think older people as well that get to see him be who he is with his family and out and about, and then also be in you know in fellow travelers and have these incredible roles. Um, so he's he's just so talented, and uh, again lucky to have him as an EP on this show and also uh, just to be an actor in it. And I know, you know, we'll work together in the future for sure. Um, speaking of incredible people and family, how is your family? How is uh, Greg? Everyone's doing well? Everyone's doing well. You know, I think it's a little crazy on the world right now. With yeah. Politics and everything and the war, you know, in, in Israel and guys like it's, it's all a little crazy. So we are trying to keep the house as normal as possible you know kids going to school and of course keeping everyone safe but you know I, I would be lying to you if i didn't say we weren't also like gosh it just seems like you know people can't catch a break or just find some you know the strikes obviously and uh -huh. you know, so many people this summer that were like you know living in cars and losing apartments and how like it's just it's been um it's been a, a tough i don't know i would say six months but obviously it's been longer than that so um you know it makes things like this working on stuff like fellow travelers and being to like share you know i don't think my son and daughter will be watching this quite yet but one day they will and, and i know how proud i am of it and how much i think that they'll enjoy it and how interesting they'll find it um well yeah no thank you for sharing that and it is such a heavy time in so many aspects but right. it, it is so important that we still have these amazing program these amazing stories um so thank you so much for for the time today and thank you so much for being for for telling this story um i think people are really going to connect with it um and like i said learn a lot like I, there was so much that i you know even i do know a lot about history i didn't know a lot of these things so i thought it was really 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 informative um so everyone just a reminder you can catch fellow travelers starting october 27th on showtime